All right, it is time for a random reading, except it's not really random. Okay, so this is two things at once. Two things at once, that's gonna be a sub theme here <laughs> because right now I am two things at once. I am simultaneously excited and full of energy and euphoric and um, got the <laughs> I am simultaneously full of energy and euphoric and um, can't even talk. <laughs> and simultaneously very tired and I feel like I could just pass out. In fact, I probably will have a nap after I record this. So I am two things at once. And the cards that just popped out as I was saying that we have um, High Priestess and the Nine of Cups. So the High Priestess being, you know, the High Priestess and the Nine of Cups being emotional maturity. So this is something I will talk more of in a little bit. But but the Nine of Cups is also the Wish Come True card. So to have these two cards pop right out, right off the bat, when I messed up that shuffle like that, that is amazing. So, but on the theme of two things at once, this is simultaneously a timeless reading for whenever you see this and also a reading for Lion's Gate, it is something like the 5th of August, 2022, as I'm recording this. So Lion's Gate, August 8th is coming up. So we are steeped in Leo energy, the energy of the sun. That's why I've got this little sunflower guy here. <laughs> Couldn't resist, he's hanging out. <laughs> I still don't know what the message is. So let me just get some cards. Five of Pentacles, Four of Cups, Five of Wands. Well, those are cards are bummers coming out underneath the High Priestess and the Nine of Cups. So I'm super curious to see like, what what is this, right? What is this? What's going on here? But I mean, I guess it is two things at once. So we have this dichotomy Nine of, nine of, okay, I thought that was the Nine of Swords, but it's actually the Nine of Wands, so that's, you know, better. Um, this dichotomy between this really awesome, high-frequency, beautiful, powerful, like, intuitive, magical energy up here, and then, uh, honestly, I haven't seen four, these are four kind of bummer cards, right? Five of Pentacles being the you know, lack mentality, feeling like you're left out in the cold, feeling like you don't have something, right? The, the feelings of lack. And the Four of Cups, this is, this is, I call this the sulky teenager card, right? This is just <sighs> focusing on everything that you don't have instead of focusing on what you have. It's, it's always like this juxtaposition on the Four of Cups between the Three Cups and this One Cup, the Three Cups and the One Cup. The... depiction of this card changes depending on the deck. You know, sometimes it's showing the person fixating on the one thing they can't have. Sometimes it shows them fixating on one cup that's spilled over. They're crying over spilled milk when they still have three cups. But it, it always has this theme of not using your focus clearly, right? Not focusing on what is beneficial to you. So, uh, and to just plow plow through these bummer cards, <laughs> Five of Wands, I mean, that's traditionally a card of conflict, but if you can see here, this isn't really that much of a conflict. It's nobody fighting with these Five Wands on this card. It is five toys being dangled in front of this cat, and this, ca this cat is essentially going, there's so many toys around me, I don't know which one to play with. So it's a little bit hectic, a little bit chaotic. If you've ever tried dangling five toys in front of a cat, they will try to catch them all. Um, they can typically catch three. My cats can catch three at once, but they can't do more than that, right? They can do one in each hand and then with their mouth. And some, sometimes they can actually get two in one hand, but they'd be really hard pressed to catch five. So that, to me, actually, instead of like chaos and conflict, or this is definitely chaos, but instead of conflict or fighting, to me, this five of wands feel like feels more like biting off more than you can chew a little bit. And then the nine of wands is almost like the consequence of that. Feeling a little tired feeling a little fatigued, feeling a little bit like a cat just washed up on the beach. <laughs> that would not be a happy cat. And the lovers. <laughs> 
and the lovers. And when I was pre-shuffling uh, Temperance, I was sitting there going, man, I am like really on the moon and really tired at the same time, kind of strange. And then the Temperance card flipped out and I shuffled it back in because I like to have the shuffle on the camera when I can. Um, and I remember thinking, oh, okay, it's like these two, two halves, these two opposing sides, these two facets coming together, right? And this, so this is confirmed here with the lovers. And we have these two cards, the two cats, the white cat and the black cat. They, they're connected here. Their hearts are literally connected. Their hearts are literally connected. So, it's like, you, I mean, we, we, but also you, you and we, we and you, <laughs> both at one time. Are reaching, have already reached or will reach. <laughs> so I'll say you are reaching, you are reaching because it's gonna happen whenever it happens, but you're doing it. Are reaching a level of emotional maturity. Um, I would even go so far as to say like psychic clarity. <laughs> um, pointing out this high priestess and inner balance. Yeah, I was, cause I was, I was going to say you've reached a level of emotional maturity and like inner balance so that now something can manifest for you um, because you're balancing out all of these various different energies. And, uh, but I, I felt, you know, maybe I could do some confirmation on that and I got the emperor. So yeah, right. Talking about manifestation, like I was thinking manifestation and the emperor comes out. This is the card. You know, this is an energy that manifests whatever it wants, but what it, it rules its domain, right? This is the emperor. So here we go. We have these four fantastic, beautiful energies sitting on top down below. We have these four, not bad. None of these are real, are particularly bad, you know, I mean, not that there's any really any bad cards in the tarot, but I know there's certain cards that when you pull them out, you're kind of like, oh man, really that one? <laughs> right? That's why I call them bummer cards, right? You have to work with these cards, the bummer cards in the tarot, you have to work a little harder to find the blessing. You have to work a little harder to find the higher frequency of the card, right? It's like the nine of cups jumps out or the high priestess or the lovers jump out, right? And these cards, you're like, yeah, like it's really easy to find the higher frequency meaning of the card. These cards down here, you have to work on a little bit more, right? With the Five of Pentacles, like what's good about the Five of Pentacles here? What's good about the Five of Pentacles? You know, I'm so I'm specifically looking at the imagery on this card. This cat look is looking kind of bummed, right? This cat is staring down at the ground going like, man, I'm not feeling it, right? <laughs> Maybe this cat is feeling the, the lack mentality, but this cat is looking up at the sky. He's looking up out there going like, wow, you know, it's like this cat hasn't lost hope. <laughs> this cat has not lost hope. This cat sees that something good is coming. Maybe the human is coming, bringing them some, you know, tuna fish or something, right? It's like this cat knows something's good is coming. So that's like this impression I get here of how these two halves are playing out for you is going to be different for everybody, right? And maybe it's internally where you feel like you are two things at once, or maybe you keep flip-flopping between two different states of consciousness. Maybe it's you and another person who keep like going back and forth some way. Maybe it's you and the rest of the world, right? Maybe it's your internal reality against your external reality, <laughs> like where, where it's things have been back and forth. You just can't see eye to eye or, or you just feel like everything is so much different. Like you're so different or the world is so different or why can't everything add up, right? It's just polarization, right? This is like literally depicting a, a polarization and an experience of duality, but it's Okay, I wanna, before I finish that sentence, <laughs> two, two more, two more work cards. Weird, the fates was face up in this deck. So there we go, something faded. Something faded in like a magical destined kind of way, specifically with this faded energy, the fates, it's like something that you planned, like you planned for this life. 
Have you ever had any memories of planning out your life? That's really strange when those memories start to come through. And you can like, I specifically remember like hovering above earth, looking down and I, I could like zoom into earth and like move around, like see, I could look. It's like I could remote view, right? I could see into earth, but I had to like funnel and funnel and funnel and tunnel and tunnel and tunnel through the energetic barriers all around earth. You know, I, I wasn't doing anything. I was just observing, right? Just looking. Cause I was trying to figure out like where I went into incarnate and all of that and then plan out like certain things about my life, like certain intentions. I was, I was setting intentions for my life and I was like zooming in, zooming in. And I was like looking around, looking around. I mean, I, I remember doing this many times and then I remember popping back out and you're, you're back out there and you know, back out there in the ether and like talking to well, specifically talking to my husband and we're like planning out our lives. It's like, okay, I'm gonna be like this and you're gonna be like that. It's like, you know, kids playing a game, kids playing a game of imagination. Do you ever play, you know, just playing make-believe when you're a kid and before you start to play the game, it's like, okay, okay. Like say, I, like that's how, what, that's how me and my friends used to play. We'd be like, okay, like say we're gonna be raccoons and then say like, you're gonna be the mother raccoon and then you're gonna be like the little brother raccoon and then like say we're gonna go on an adventure and find blackberries, right? <laughs> like a little, that's how I used to play make-believe with my friends when I was a kid. And it's basically the same thing before I incarnated, before all of my lives. It's like you're floating above earth and you're like, you're planning out your life and how it's going to go and you're setting these intentions. And there are certain, like, and some people like really script their life very tightly and like implant all of these like specific things that, that are going to be, have a high probability of happening. And you may be going to like put in a bunch of like, chances for it to happen so that it has a very high probability of happening. It's not that your life is predetermined. It's that there's, it's all probabilities and potentials, right? Other people have a much more open plan for their lives. Um, but this, this fates, the fates here, that's what the point of this whole story is that, um, it's something that you planned, something that you planned before you incarnated. It's like, it's about to click into place and that, and when those moments come in, it's like something can literally fall out of the sky. It's like a relationship, like you could just bump into somebody somewhere or meet somebody in the strangest way, like the most bizarre sequence of synchronicities, like bringing you together, like with this person, whether like a friendship or relationship or whatever, but also just like a job, like falling out of the sky or a completely random, just a random, completely bizarre event. And the event could even be like a tower moment at first. It could seem like a tower moment, but then at the end of it, you go, wow, if that had never happened, I would never be here. And then all this good stuff would never have happened. My life would never have been changed in this way. So trust that whatever is about, whatever unfolds for you in a very synchronistic way is to get you to where you planned for yourself to be. It's to, it's to catch you up with your own intentions for your life. You are catching up for your own intentions with your life. And, um, you're, you're, you're getting there because you have like resolved, uh, what the, you've like harmonized the polarity. <laughs> you've harmonized the polarity, right? We have all this fantastic euphoric energy up top and all this really, I mean, this is, this is how I was describing myself feeling, right? On the one hand, I'm all like euphoric and on the moon, that's this top row. On the bottom hand, this is all just kind of tired energy. It's so saying none of these cards are particularly like that bad, right? It, but they are tired. These are tired cards. They're bummer cards. It's just like, ugh, right? Um, and, and somehow, some way that is tempering inside of you. It's coming into balance inside of you. And this is playing out in different ways where it's like, like you rising up to someone else's level or someone rising up to your level or you rising up to like a, a higher level that you have set for yourself. This this is all about like leveling the playing field. It, all of those ways I just describe it have a ha, kind of have a connotation that I don't really like that I don't really intend because it's not about like hierarchy here. It's not about hierarchy. It's about harmony and getting on the same page and, and things being tempered inside of you and inner balance is what it's what is it is what it's about it's just kind of unfortunate that um the the english language is kind of has like this like hierarchical like the english language <laughs> has an assumption of hierarchy kind of cooked into it and i mean that's going to slowly evolve out but you know i am a product of my times and i use language the way i do because i've spent my life speaking it so it's like there's only so much I can do sometimes to like edit my speech to say what I mean and I try but <laughs> it's just to be clear I don't I don't mean this in terms of like 
any type of hierarchy, but but it can, this can feel like, maybe it can feel that way sometimes in your life where you're looking, maybe sometimes you look around at other people and you go like, man, I wish they would just get on my level, right? I wish this person would just get on my level or I wish like society would just get on my level. Well, it's like maybe they're about to. Um, and I think as you see this transformation process unfold, for if, if, if it's people outside of you who, who are doing this like leveling up, um, as they kind of get on your level, so to speak, you're gonna kind of understand how you were always on the same level. You were always on the same level. There, there was always equality. It was just an imbalance in experience. Does that make sense? <laughs> it's like, we're all the same. We're, we're all one. We're, we're all, we all have the same potential, even if we have different pasts. We all have the same future potential, even if we have different pasts. Um, and the human experience that we have been in has given us an assumption of hierarchy, um, some cultures more than others, right? Um, but it's like that is being transmuted. And as people start all getting on the same page, and I mean, I don't, and I don't, when I mean the same page, I mean like, that's the closest I can come. I don't mean everybody becoming the same. I don't mean everybody agreeing. I know agreeing is typically associated with being on the same page, but it's like being on the same page energetically, being on the same page energetically. So maybe even this is learning to agree to disagree, right? Agree to disagree. Everything kind of harmonizing and leveling out and balancing out, harmonizing and leveling and balancing, harmonizing and balancing is what I mean here. Um, and this could also be you, right? If you've ever felt like, bad about yourself like I'll use myself as an example like um you know sometimes when I'm sitting around and I'm starting to feel like low self-esteem right I, uh, I like and because low self-esteem is something I used to struggle with like epically <laughs> like epic I used to have like epically horrible self-esteem on like a completely astronomical level <laughs> and I just remember always like looking out at people that I admired and I was like, I just want to be like them. Like, why can't I be like them? Like, I, I want to have like that kind of character that shines, right? I wanted, to, I wanted to shine and I wanted to feel confident and I wanted to feel like I could walk down the street with my head held high and I wanted to feel like comfortable in my own skin and I wanted to feel like I had like vibrancy and brightness inside of me, right? That's how I wanted to feel. And I would, I would look at people who, that I admired because it, I just I admired people who really shone right I admired people who shone and I mean obviously I still do but like and I, sometimes even like looking at pe the people that I admired they would almost kind of make me feel bad sometimes it would make me feel bad because I because I admired them so much and I wanted to be like them and I like just couldn't figure it out because I felt so small and I felt so dim and I felt so slow and I felt so ugly and I felt so just like bleh, right I could go on but that's why go there? That's a bad spiral of energy. We don't need to entertain. <laughs> you, you get what I mean, right? And I, I just didn't know how to like lift myself up into a, like a higher state of being, like especially like in my body, right? It was like sometimes I could get into a higher frequency state, like in my imagination, where I could imagine the entire universe and I could explore and create in my mind. And so when I was like alone in a room, it would be easier to work myself up into a higher state, but it was harder. It was so much harder to maintain that higher state of consciousness walking out into the world. But I mean, um, I think I, I'm actually like my, my point was that sometimes when I when I'm starting starting to slip back into that right when I'm starting to slip back into the low self esteem place, and, and especially like if I'm playing the comparison game where I look out at someone that I admire and I go oh, I want to be like them right I want to be like them, um, I, I stop and I think and I remember how I was ten years ago, five years ago, fifteen years ago, whatever right, and I think wow I have really I have become the person I intended to be like I did it I really did do it I really did pull myself up and out like and 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 like I really did unleash my character I unleashed my character I like <laughs> Like my, my personality, my character, I allowed it to shine, right? And I, I, allow, I allowed myself to like become familiar with it. And this is of course layers and layers and layers of the onion on that. And even this year, I have been going through like whole new deep levels of healing and unpeeling <laughs> and all of this stuff of uh, like being more comfortable in my own skin, right? And really just being more authentic everywhere I go and just really trying to feel good about myself like all the time. and focusing on like character building if that makes any sense like I heard an expression a while ago this is from some kind of tradition I don't remember what it was um but the expression went something like when money is lost nothing is lost 
When health is lost, something is lost. When character is lost, everything is lost. <laughs> and I think something I wrote down in my journal a while ago was, it doesn't matter what you do, it only matters And now I'm trying to link the sentence up. Let me start that over. <laughs> it doesn't matter what you do. The only thing that matters is the character with which you do it. The only thing that matters is the character with which you do it or the character with which you act. Phrase that however you want. It's all about character. It's about character. It's about your character. <sighs> and this brings us back around to the ego, right? To the ego. It's interesting. When I first started my spiritual journey and I was like, oh, okay, I want to like dismantle my ego, right? Um, and I have been doing a lot of that and that has been very important and I'm glad I did it and I will continue to do it. But I had this assumption that dismantling my ego and even having some very profound ego death experiences, I had this assumption that releasing my ego as I walked my spiritual path would somehow like also dismantle my personality because I was like, okay, well, the ego is the personality. And yes, to a large extent, but not really because I feel like now I can distinguish between ego and character. Ego on the one hand, I could use that word to describe all of the parts of my personality that were not useful to me, that were holding me back, all of the limiting beliefs, all of the social conditioning, all of the habits I inherited from my parents and grandparents and all of that crap, right? And all, all of my own just bad patterns. And that's the thing I've been dismantling. And as I've dismantled that, I have just been able to unfold and I've been able to flourish and I've been able to just reach higher and higher and higher states of like spiritual ec ecstasy, I would go so far as to say spiritual ecstasy. Dismantling the ego has brought me to states of spiritual ecstasy. Uh, but at the same time, I feel like this is also allowing my character to shine and for me to actually discover my own character, like wh who I really am. And it's interesting. So in this moment, I feel like I could use the word ego to define all of the bad aspects of my personality that I, that were not useful to me. And I feel like I could use the word character to describe my soul, almost like, the, like true character comes from the soul, right? True character comes from the soul. So I think I had this, this, this misconception where I thought as I dismantled my ego that I would become kind of like a blob. <laughs> like I, I felt like as I dismantled my ego, I would become a characterless blo like blob or a or a person who lacked personality. And I remember that's why at the beginning of my spiritual journey, I really, really struggled in the whole concept of like ego death or releasing the ego because I thought it would turn me into a blob, like with no character, right? I thought it was, I thought it was like, I equated it with losing my personality. And here it turns out, no, as you release the ego or as I released my ego, I discovered my true character. As I released my ego, I, I, I discovered the character of my soul and I continue to do so every day, every day, every day. And it just feels so good. Like it feels so good to let your character shine, right? To let your character shine and to prioritize your character. And this is not your ego, right? Let that ego shit go. Let your character, the character of your, sh your soul, to let the character of your soul shine. It's like nothing feels as good as that, right? Well, I mean, you know, I, think, I, think, I can think of a few things, but it's like, it's, it, it is so good, right? It is so good because it, and as I'm feeling it right now, as I can like feel like this, the character of my soul, like shining out, it just feels like light, right? I, I've had many experiences of like releasing the light, like out of my chest or feeling, feeling the light of source. A couple lion's gates ago, must have been Lionsgate 2020, I think, I had a really deep experience of like connecting with that source energy and feeling the source energy flow through my heart chakra. And it was like, just, I, I'm not even gonna attempt to describe it. I don't have the words, okay? But when I feel my character shine through me, this, it, it, it's similar, it's similar. It is, it, it is like the same sort of experience. Letting my character shine feels like very comparable to feeling source energy flow through me. So just think about it, right? Leo, Leo energy, right? The sun and the zodiac Leo energy. 
and we talk about the great central sun, we talk about source, we talk about light. We could put all of these concepts in one basket, right? This is all light, this is all character, this is all the sun, this is all... I don't know of a word that like encompasses that other than source energy, right? Other than source energy, it's all the light of the sun. It's all the light of source. And even the word light doesn't even begin to scratch the surface because it goes so far beyond just light. But I like haven't thought of any of this un until like right this second. So I'm really, I'm really struggling to articulate myself here. But it's like, I want to put personal character, Leo energy, the sunlight itself, like the sun, our sun, right? Sunlight, the great central sun, the light of the great central sun and source itself and source energy. All those things to me is like one basket. It's like one basket. They're all in one basket. They're all variations on a theme. So I feel like what this all boils down to at the end of the day is you can, like, it's like you can commune with source, with your source. You can commune with your source. That's how I'll put it. You can commune with your source. You can feel source energy. You ground source energy into the earth. You share source energy with the world when you allow your true, the true character of your soul, when you allow your character to shine. And when you commit to your own character when you commit to the character of your soul that that's i and i've found myself lately practicing this where it doesn't matter what type of situation i'm in or what kind of decision i have to make i i just ask myself like how, how can i like maintain my character you can even think of actors right because um you know there's like a, there's always like an association between leo energy and the fifth house you know the fifth house is ruled by leo and actors it, it's like this um like being on the stage, right? Being in the spotlight and also like trying on different characters, right? Acting out different characters. You know, act like I've, I, I, I never do any acting. I've never done any acting whatsoever, but you know, actors talk about like never breaking character, right? You gotta stay in character because they, and they find the character and then they hold on to it and they stay in character. I've been practicing doing that like with myself. It's like, how can I stay in my own character? The thing is my character can shift, <laughs> it can change, it can be fickle, it can be one thing one day and another thing another day. But it's like all under the umbrella, right? All in the same basket of my soul's character, right? My, my soul maybe has many facets to the character, right? A very, a very um, maybe your character is very dynamic, right? Very complex, very varied, still all one, basket, all one umbrella, all one character. So it's like, I've been practicing staying in character, staying in my own character. And when I have a decision to make, or when I'm trying to figure out how I should do something or what I should do, I just decide like, what's in character for me? What's in character? What would my character do? Right? And this is all kind of another way of just talking about, you know, being authentic and letting your light shine. But it, it's interesting because this is a very Leonine, a very leonine way of talking about it and if you notice if you've noticed right i will use the zodiac signs as an analogy here because that's useful <laughs> but it is this is not limited to these archetypes you could think about this in many other ways this is just one way you know 12 zodiac signs we move through the year we move through every zodiac sign and every single sign has its own way of expressing the same idea, right? So, and the main idea that is to be expressed is source energy, source energy or light or the soul, whatever you want to call it. I'll just say source energy because that kind of, that's the most neutral way I can think of to describe it. Source energy, right? So Aries, talk like feels about expressing source energy but through action and through the flame and through fire and through I am right Gemini expresses source energy through a thought here a thought there a thought here a thought there and the constant generation of a multitude of thoughts and personalities and 
concepts, the generation of many different things. That's how Gemini explores source energy. Leo explores and expresses source energy through the expression of character. And you could go on and on and on. You could think about how every single zodiac sign explores source energy differently and how it expresses source energy differently and how it communicates the idea of expressing source energy differently. So it's like, you know, and I'm like very like influenced by the zodiac seasons, by the astrological seasons. Every, every time the sun moves into a new sign, I am like, I'm different. <laughs> I really feel the shift. And, but it's like, sometimes I feel like, you know, I make all these videos, but they all have just the same message. And it's just like, be source energy <laughs> like that, that, that that's like the only thing that there is to be expressed right that's the only like you are an emanation of source consciousness and you are here here to be source energy and like, that's like the only thing that there is to say it's the only thing there is to do or be or anything that's all there is anywhere that that's all there is and, and yet isn't it interesting how many different ways we can talk about it and think about it and feel about it and express it and so Right now, this is very Leo, right? This is, and it's about your character and it's about being true to your own character. And this is just another way of feeling into and thinking about and expressing the concepts of being authentic, being true to yourself, being aligned with your soul, being aligned with source. Right now, it's stay in character. It's all about character. Focus on your character and let your character grow. Let your character evolve let your character become let your character become let your character become right opportunity <laughs> i have to laugh this happened this is happening so often lily i have not pulled this card before i don't think not that i remember opportunity we have the moon in a dark night sky around the trees. This is a perfect way to finish. I will read this card. I opened right to it. <laughs> All right. Moon through pine trees, an occasional howl, <laughs> an occasional owl hoot. <laughs> okay, third time's a charm. An occasional owl hoot and the song of a solo coyote punctuate the stillness in the forest as a traveler walks through the pines. Light from a waning moon filters down through the canopy of needles and cascades across the forest floor. Sometimes the trees obscure the moon, but sometimes its illumination clearly shows the path ahead. Pines are the most ancient plant genera on the planet. They have existed nearly three times longer than all flowering plant species. Because most pines stay green all winter, they traditionally represent longevity, immortality, fertility, health, and abundance. The moon and her gossamer glow represents the feminine and receptive side of life. Just as the moon receives and reflects the light of the sun, symbolically the moon represents receiving the goodness of the universe flowing to you. Gifts from the universe are ready to cascade into your life. Abundance, health, longevity, vitality, and joy are flowing to you gently and easily in the days ahead. There may be times when the goodness of life feels like it's ebbing and flowing rather than being a steady stream of fulfillment. This is similar to the moon peeking through the pine trees for a moment or two. But as you stay open and receptive, physical and emotional gifts will come into your life. Instead of, bemoan, instead of bemoaning the fact that there isn't a steady and constant stream of joy and gifts from the universe, accept whatever you receive in a spirit of gratitude and your bounty will increase tenfold. This is a universal law. All right, guys, I'm going to leave you there. Sending you so much love and light. Bye. <laughs>